It is a parliamentary election that will define the limits of Emmanuel Macron's power to enact reforms in his second term as president amid economic crisis at home and on the international stage. My hope is to have a large majority for the presidential party, so bills and reforms that are needed can be voted through calmly. It's something that would be very difficult in a divided assembly. But Macron's centrist majority is at risk after a strong challenge by a left-wing coalition under Jean-Luc Mélenchon that looks set to become the country's main opposition. At a time of economic and social crisis, people want decisive government. They want answers. What happens if they don't get it? More people on the streets, more demonstrations, more gilets jaunes-like crises, I will say. It's probably a legitimacy crisis that can lead to more um, social movements, for example. So that will be the real crisis on the streets. The outcome of the vote then may signal the return of gilets jaunes or yellow vest type protests that blighted Macron's first term. What also seems clear is that the excitement over Emmanuel Macron's centrist political movement, neither of the left nor of the right, has fizzled out in five years. There is real voter disillusionment and apathy. Low turnout both at the presidential election in April and also at these parliamentary ones now, with a majority of registered French voters not even bothering to turn up to vote in the first round last weekend. This is a neighborhood of elderly people. Young voters are not interested. They don't vote. They're worth nothing. Not one of them has any value. They are all con artists and bandits, and France is not what it used to be. It raises questions about the legitimacy of a government endorsed by only a thin slice of the electorate, and it points to a political landscape in which fewer and fewer French people feel they have a stake or even much interest. Jonah Hull, Al Jazeera, Paris. Well, Macron's closest allies in the cabinet are all hoping for re-election. Twelve of the 15 members of France's Council of Ministers had favourable results in the first round of voting, likely to pass through to the second. Three ministers, though, are facing a tougher challenge at the ballot box. Uh, if they lose their seats in the National Assembly, they will also lose their cabinet posts. Let's speak now to James Shields, who's a professor of French politics at the University of Warwick, joins us from Bristol via Skype. Uh, James, it shows how important this is, isn't it? The uh, Macron could lose allies and ministers and a lot more besides. Oh, these elections are absolutely critical for Macron's presidency. And the big question, the first big question is, can his party win an outright majority, as it did in 2017? Um, I think not. I think it won't. Can it therefore, with its centrist allies, piece together a majority? Possibly, but even there, maybe not. And that would mean that having to go out more widely to other parties, notably the centre-right Republicans, maybe even on a policy-by-policy, vote-by-vote basis, that would be very difficult. The nightmare scenario, I have to say, is that the union of the left under Jean-Luc Mélenchon wins most seats, wins a majority and forces Macron into what the French call cohabitation, uh, co-governing with mm. a hostile left-wing majority uh, from whom he would be obliged to select his next prime minister. Now, I don't think that Mélenchon's union of the left has the electoral mileage to do this. Uh, much more likely they will win between a quarter and a third of the seats, but they will form a very powerful block of opposition yes. against a president who may struggle to hold together a governing coalition in the centre. Right. It's funny, isn't it? Because there he was fighting the, the threat of the far right in the general election, and it's the other end of the political spectrum, isn't it, that could determine the country's politics? Absolutely. This is, the, this is the paradox of these two closely aligned elections. In the presidential election, Macron was on the ramparts saying that the French voters had to turn out to, 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 to block the extreme right. Now he's on the ramparts <laughs> saying that French voters must turn out to block the extreme left. And what that's a reflection of is the effect that five years of Macron in power has, have had on the political landscape. We now have a, a, a centrist bloc, a far-right bloc, 
a far left bloc and almost nothing in between. The thing is, uh, they stayed away from the voting booths, didn't they, in, in large numbers in the first round. So what does that say about uh, the president's legitimacy? Well, more people, you're right, more people stayed away last week in the first round than voted. There was an abstention rate, a record abstention rate of 50, over 52%, 52.5%. Now, there are varying reasons for this. One is the electoral calendar. These elections follow hot on the heels of the presidential elections. And there is some view that they are elections of confirmation. They are rubber stamping the election of Macron. So to that extent, uh, they, they could be seen as reaffirming his legitimacy as president. I'm not convinced by this argument because the, the electoral calendar has been the same for the last 20 years. And it's only now that we are seeing these record levels of abstention, 2017 and again today. I think the deeper reason is that we're in a prolonged period in France of widespread disenchantment with politics, with politicians, with political parties of all stripes. And there's a bigger question even hanging over what you could call the democratic process, um, a growing public feeling that elections are pointless. There's no point voting because it changes nothing for the better. Now, this was the reason most cited by abstentionists last weekend. So I think we need to pay heed to that. And it's a sentiment that particularly affects uh, younger, modestly educated, working class voters who are the most numerous in deserting the polling booths. Yeah. OK, James, uh, we'll leave it there. Very interesting to see what happens there. We'll observe with great interest. Uh, James Shields, Professor of French Politics at the University of Warwick. Thanks a lot. My pleasure.